Hey guys, V here for the first walkthrough with commentary I've done in a couple of months actually. They've been kind of sitting without the microphone for a few and I finally got a new microphone so can actually talk into one now. Uh, this one is going to be for Mask of Mist on the PS4. I did get a review code from the publisher for this so thank you sometimes you for the code so that I can get this guide done. Um, I'm not going to do too much of an introduction into it. All the Miss Bowl trophies you'll be able to get as long as you're following this. But one quick thing before we actually start this, the run speed in this game is constant and you're basically going to be sprinting the entire time. You can't really change it or go slower. There is a dash that you can use, but we're not going to use it until basically the end of the game when we're kind of backtracking a pretty good deal to get one of the missable trophies. For that reason, I highly recommend going into options and turning up your camera sensitivity just a little bit. Um, that way, because you're moving so quickly, your camera kind of keeps up with it. Otherwise, you can kind of feel it starting to drag a little bit. And I did turn my music all the way down, but I do not recommend you do the same. Um, I never recommend that, that gamers play games without the actual music, but because this is a walkthrough video, it's going to be a lot easier for me to fix the audio after this if I turn it down. So once you change your settings, make sure you hit apply and then we can go ahead and get started. So just hit new game and there's going to be a little bit of an opening cutscene here. And while this is going on, I'm going to go ahead and just give you another little heads up on this game. When it does an auto save, your game will freeze. It won't crash, it won't close or anything, but there will be a noticeable just pause in what is happening around you. So just keep that in mind as we go. It's not going to be anything super drastic. It's just, you know, it's a little noticeable. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Okay, when we load into the game here first, we have one puzzle that we're going to be met with, and it's just this puzzle right in front of this portal. And as you can see, there are four pedestals here, and we need four of these little red statuettes for each of them. So we're going to pick up four. So here's the first one, and then go around the side to the right, and use circle to jump. And then this last little cubby hole is going to be the second one. And then make your way back to the front. And then on the other side of the ruins, go ahead and come on in here. And where this little dice is, go ahead and pick that up. And behind it will be the red statuette. That did that super quick, <laughs> but there was one behind that. And we're actually going to take this back to the portal because we are going to be needing this a little bit later in the game. So it's better to just keep it with us, you know, just, just for now. So the last one that we need, if you turn around and go back into the little ruin area here and then turn left and then in this chest all the way down at the end is going to be the fourth statuette. So once you have that, go ahead and exit the ruins and then just interact with each of the pedestals to place a statuette down on it. And that will open up that little portal. So go ahead and pick up your dice and just give it a nice little toss forward. So if you look to your right, you're going to see a couple of vines here that we can't get through just yet. And if you look to your left, there's going to be a blue flower that we can pick up. So go ahead and grab that before we continue on. And then come back down to the dirt path, pick up your dice again, go through the little gap in the little wall there. And then when you get in front of this house, just go ahead and toss your dice anywhere, preferably over to the right because that's where that's going to be going. So go inside the house once you have a free hand. And then once you load in, you're going to go upstairs first, so ignore the door and then the kitchen area. And then go down the hallway and go in the room on the left. There we go. <laughs> okay, and you can't go through that door directly in front of you just yet, but over here on the left is going to be a sword that you can pick up. So grab that and then go through the door across the way. Oops. And then on this table is a little note. 
and here we have a puzzle solution that we're going to be using here in a couple of minutes. So we're going to reference this again just a little bit later. And then if you turn around, there's going to be another chest. Go ahead and open that up and pick up the ruby and the healing potion. And then make your way back down the hallway. And then use your sword to break these planks on this room over here. And then use your sword to break the little crates here. And in this chest is going to be the first of the 10 stone masks that we need. So that's going to be, again, the first one out of 10. So make your way downstairs. And then head on into the kitchen area. And there's going to be a carrot on the shelf that you need to pick up. We can't do anything with the stove just yet. And we can't do anything with this hatch over here just yet. So go ahead and ignore that. And now head over to the room that was just by the stairs. And in here we have what is going to be a portal directly in front of us with these five symbols on the ground. So if you hit down on your D-pad, you can open up your journal. And as you can see on the right page, there are five symbols that are also matching the symbols that are on the ground. And you need to hit them in the same order as they are shown on the page. So it's going to be the little arrows, the little R looking symbol, the B looking symbol. I'm going to say that's a fish. <laughs> And then, of course, the last one up top. And that's going to open up the portal right in front of you. So go ahead and go inside. And then go ahead and take a right into the little bedroom area. And there's going to be another chest here. Go ahead and pick that up. And you're going to get the anti-rust potion. And we can't make this just yet, but we are going to use that to open up the hatch in the kitchen. So just keep that handy for later. And then here we have our first crafting table, which, again, we can't really use right now. Uh, we don't have the ingredients that we need for that potion. Just to the left of that is gonna be another journal page. And this is just telling you about the Fort Terrace key, which is lost, which we are gonna find a little bit later. And along with that key, this painting is where we're actually gonna be finding it. So try and memorize this little picture here as we need to go to this area to find that key. Obviously I will let you know when we get there, but this is what it's gonna look like. So one more thing before we go. If you look just above the exit here, you can see that there is a little painting with a cube going into a circle. And that cube are these little dice things that are scattered across this game. And if you look up, there's going to be some floating circles just above you. And you want to hit this pink one that has a key in it. And this is the key to the storage room. So now we have everything that we can possibly get out of the house right now. So go ahead and make your way back through the hallway and then out the front door. And again, the loading screens on this are going to be a little, little touch and go, so just wait it out as you can. Okay, so the storage area is actually going to be the building just across the way, but before we go in there, we're going to go ahead and break those vines that we passed earlier. So make your way back through the gap in the wall, and over here on the left with the vines, break those with the sword, and just behind those you're going to pick up another blue flower and these little tree mushrooms, or excuse me, wood mushrooms. And we're going to use those for some potions a little later on in the game. So once you have those, make your way back through the gap in the wall, and now we can head over to the right and go inside this building, which we need that storage key for. And we're just going to pick up a few things while we're in here. So once it loads in, go ahead and break the crates directly in front of you. Open up that chest and pick up the two rubies inside. And then make your way over to the right and pick up the frying pan and this little lever handle. Yeah, lever handle, we'll call it that on the table there and then that's all we need here so make your way out
And now we're just going to pick up a couple of miscellaneous items just over from this area on the right over here. So first, pick up the berries that are just across the way, and then interact with this lever to open up the gate. And before you go through, go ahead and pick up that dice that we've been dragging across the little area. And then go ahead and give that a toss, just so it's a little bit closer to that bridge over there. And over to your right is going to be a set of ruins. This is actually where the final portal is going to appear once we're done with all the little temples. But for now, since obviously we can't do anything, go ahead and pick up the brushwood that is directly in front of you. And just to the right of that is going to be a piece of paper. And this is just going to explain the six navigation crystals, which are activated in the six temples. So just yeah just pick that up just so you have it and then on the opposite side of these ruins is another blue flower so go ahead and pick that up and then close to where you just threw that dice this broken bridge over here we are going to eventually cut down that tree so that we can get across here but for now jump down and pick up this brushwood and then just make your way back up the steps and we're going to head back towards the house now and go ahead and leave your dice there. We're going to be needing that later. And just across the way is going to be another gate. And we're going to use our little lever, lever handle that we just picked up here. And go ahead and put that on. And then interact with it a second time to actually pull it and open up the gate. And we're about to get our first trophy here. As you can see, there is a purple and pink little guy there that's going to attack you. He's really slow. Um, you can attack with R2. You can actually just hold it down like I am. But when he pauses is when he's going to try attacking you. Just back up when he does and he should be easy enough to miss. So once he's down, you'll get your first battle trophy. And then if you just go forward a little bit and look to your right, you'll see some moving vines that are blue and like glowing orange. We can't go past there yet. Don't touch them as they will do damage to you and you want to try to keep all the health that you can right now because as you can see we only have one health potion and we want to save that for as long as possible. So just keep following down this path and there's going to be some more brushwood over here on the left. And then keep going down and over on the left is this stone that's kind of like glowing green yellowish at the top. If you interact with that, you will get a maximum health increase. And just a little heads up on those, they do not replenish your health completely. They do extend your health bar, but they won't actually heal you. So if you happen to be low on health, you do want to use your health potions as those won't really do anything for you. So go ahead and continue down this path and then go over to the left and there's going to be another wood mushroom as well as some more brushwood. And we have two more enemies here that we're just going to go ahead and kill really quick so that they're out of our way. And get the second one. Alright. And if you keep going straight, you'll notice that there is a tree as well as another broken bridge here. This is not the same one that we just saw earlier. This is a different one. but. We will be cutting down this tree shortly. We just need an ax to do so, which we do not have. But just as before, for the time being, go ahead and jump into this little hole here. And then over on the right hand side is gonna be a chest and inside is gonna be a stone mask. And that's gonna be stone mask two of 10 that we need for one of the missable trophies. So once you have that, go ahead and come back up to the top and then turn left once you're at the top and pick up some more brushwood. And then just keep going straight to pick up another wood mushroom. And if you just look to the left here, you will see a tree with some eyes on it. We can't do anything with that just yet, so just make a note of this area because we will be coming back here shortly. But for now, just keep continuing down this path. Ignore that brushwood for now and just kill this enemy. Um, these ones just spit things at you, so if you just kind of keep moving back and forth, they're pretty easy to dodge there. So. Once they're down, go ahead and pick up the brushwood that is just to the, the right of the entrance of this first temple here. And before we go in there, there is a pathway just to the right as well. So go down this pathway and we're going to pick up our first witch mushroom. And this is the mushroom that we need for that anti-rust potion. And just 
ahead of that is a cave. Don't interact with the cave yet. There is a rabbit in there that will bite you if you do. We are going to lure it out here in the next couple of minutes or so, but for now just ignore that it's there. So go ahead and go back to where that temple was. And if you just go past it and turn left a little bit, we're going to pick up some more items. So over here on the right is going to be some brushwood another blue flower, and there's also a chest over here. So open up the chest and pick up the healing potion and the ruby. And now we can go ahead and go inside the temple. And this is where we're gonna activate our first crystal. So interact with the doors and then go through the little loading screen. All right, and once you're inside, go through that first door. And here we have our first little light puzzle. As you can see, this gate is closed with two little circles on the left-hand side. Those just let you know that there are two lanterns that you need to turn on in order to open up that gate. So this one's pretty easy because both lanterns are directly in front of you, really hard to miss. So just continue on here and go ahead and kill this enemy to get him out of the way. There's going to be another one on the other side. Okay, so we have another lantern puzzle here, and at this gate takes four. Oops, sorry, let me just light this really quick. So there's one in the open right there, and there's one in the middle right here. And if you just follow this path down behind here, there's going to be another chest that has a ruby and a healing potion in it. So go ahead and pick those up. And this is the door that you initially came in through. So from here, go over to the left and then just follow this path up the stairs. And there's going to be lantern number three. And then exit out and turn left. And then just keep following the path left and then right. And there's your other lantern, and that little ding sound lets you know that the gate has opened, so go ahead and go through that. And here you just want to time it so that you don't get hit by the little pink projectiles there. Pretty easy. You can dash with square if you need to. Um, that's also pretty good with do sorry, dodging the enemies that actually spit things at you, um, but it's not super necessary. So. From here, you're going to go through this door up here on the left, and there is going to be another enemy in here, of course, so go ahead and kill him. And then on the far side of the room, break these face, and then open up the chest, pick up the rubies, and then head back out the room and turn left. And that's what I mean by the game will pause when it auto saves. So that little pause that just happened. So directly in front of you is gonna be another gate. As you can see, it requires two lanterns, but in here we have four lanterns and only two need to be lit. So as you can see underneath two of them, well, first of all, they all have a symbol in front of them, I should say. Two have a sun and two have a moon. So you wanna make sure the two with the sun are lit and the two with the moon are not. So moon not lit, sun lit, and then that one's moon, so it does not need to be lit, and there's our open gate. And here we're going to time it again so that we don't get hit by the pink projectiles. Go ahead and dash if you need to, but make your way all the way down to the end of the hallway. Open up the chest at the end and get the two rubies inside. And then make your way back into this little inlet here. So head up the stairs. And here we have yet another little lantern puzzle. And this is actually going to be the last one. So here we need a light three. And there are five in this room. So the solution for this one is going to be down these stairs. Again, just be careful of the enemies here. And then go through the door and then break the vases over there. And then on this far wall is gonna be the solution. As you can see, there are five little lanterns here, two on one side, three on the other. You're gonna light both on the two side and then the center one on the three side. So head back up the stairs to that room. 
and you are on the side that has two so go ahead and make sure those two are lit and then across the room is the three so make sure just the center one is lit here and there you go there's your gate open and here's the first activation crystal so go ahead and interact with it and you'll get your little trophy and if you interact with it again, you will actually teleport back to the entrance of the temple. So, oh, sorry, I just hit my mic. <laughs> um, I'm gonna keep calling them temples. I know they're dungeons, so just bear with me. I don't know why I keep saying the wrong thing, but yeah, so interact with it once to activate them and then interact with it a second time to teleport back to the entrance. Okay, so once you load in, we're going to head back to that first house that we entered when we started the game. We're going to do a pretty good chunk of backtracking and then forward tracking here. So we're going to make the anti-rest potion to open up the hatch in the kitchen. And then we're going to catch a rabbit and then we're going to cook a rabbit. And then we're going to get rid of those vines on that pathway over there. So make your way back to the courtyard and go inside the house. And then head over to the right through that little portal room and then to the crafting table directly in front of you and again we're going to make one anti-rust potion and then head to the kitchen area on the opposite side of the house and we're going to use that on the hatch over in the back corner And then interact with it again to actually go downstairs and there is going to be an enemy down here so just a heads up you want to kill him before you do anything and he's going to be on the corner right here all right and when he's down go ahead and break this crate and behind there is going to be a trap go ahead and pick that up break these crates here and there's going to be another journal page and this is just telling you about the vines that we're about to clear and how they take um, meat to actually disappear. <laughs> so that's why we need that rabbit. And then just on the other side of the room is gonna be another chest with some more, with another ruby and another healing potion. And that's all we need here. So go ahead and exit back out to the top of the house. And then make your way outside. All right, and now we are gonna catch ourselves a little rabbit. So go ahead and go through the gate that we just did all this stuff in. And you're gonna follow the path all the way down back to that first little temple dungeon area. And you're gonna go down the pathway that was just to the right of it. So there's the dungeon. And then just to the right is this path. And now go ahead and interact with the cave at the very end and you're going to set a trap for the rabbit that's inside. And then once the trap is on the ground, you want to interact with it again to place the carrot. And then just kind of backtrack a little bit until you hear a sound of the trap closing. That sound exactly. And then make your way back and you're going to pick up the raw meat that you have now caught. And now we're going to head all the way back to the house and we're actually gonna cook this meat. So before we do, go ahead and hit up on the D-pad to make sure that you have everything you need. You do need at least six pieces of brushwood. If you've been following this, you should have seven. The raw meat you just picked up, and of course, the frying pan that we got out of storage. So as long as you have everything, you should be good to go. If you wanna make this quicker, you can dash to get there. 
a little faster, it's up to you. You can hold down dash, which is square, um, and it'll just constantly press it every time it's ready. So head back inside the house. And then head into the kitchen area and interact with the stove to light it with the brushwood. Interact with it again to put the pan down. And one more time to actually cook the meat. All right, so now we have our fried meat. So go ahead and exit out of the house. All right, and head right through the gate again. And now we're gonna stop at the vines that we passed earlier. And we're gonna toss the meat on them so that they disappear and we can get into this little area. Again, don't touch them as they will do damage to you. So no touchy. <laughs> Once they're down, go ahead and go into the new area here. And before we do anything, we're gonna kill these two enemies to get them out of the way. Make sure you are dodging the projectiles while dodging this guy that's trying to bite you. There we go. One. And two. All right, and if you just look over to the right, you're gonna see dungeon number two. And here we have another statuette puzzle, but instead of four red statuettes, we need four green. And we can't actually get these yet, so we're gonna have to be doing a little bit of backtracking, which is, you know, basically our favorite thing here. So for now, go ahead and go straight and pick up this wood mushroom on this tree. And then just to the right of the tree are some more vines that you can break, so go ahead and do so. And then directly in front of you is gonna be some more brushwood. And then just to the right of that is another stone to increase your maximum health. And again, it doesn't actually heal you, it just increases your health bar, so keep that in mind. So make your way back to the main path and then go ahead and turn right and then make a kind of a hard U-turn here. And you're gonna go into this area, area with this well and there's gonna be one enemy here. Let's go ahead and kill him. All right, and just to the right of the well is going to be an axe, and this is what we're going to use to cut down all those trees that we saw. And you can interact with the well, and it'll just let you know that you need a rope. And if you interact with this stone wall, it'll just tell you you need to find another entrance, which is, of course, that well. And we can't do anything with this just yet. Of course, you're going to see a reoccurring theme here at the beginning of this game. So for now, go ahead and exit out of that area and turn right, and then pick up the brushwood just in front of you. And then this area is another puzzle that we can't do because we don't have the solution for it yet, but it should look familiar. This is the area where that Fort Terrace key was dropped, and this is that painting that was unfinished inside of that house. So we need to find the Fort Terrace key, which is just gonna be over to the right and behind the rock over here on the ground, go ahead and pick that up and you'll get your lost and found trophy. And then go ahead and go over to the left side of this area. And there's gonna be a little inlet over here with a chest and a blue flower to open up the chest and pick up the ruby and the health potion. And then the blue flower. And just down there is where we got that rabbit. So you don't need to jump down. Make your way back and then keep following the path left. And just in front of you are gonna be some vines, so break the vines, pick up the berries, and then just to the left is gonna be another chest where you're gonna get a pistol, and you'll automatically equip it, but don't fire it. You only have three bullets that you can see on the left-hand side of your screen. To fire is L2, but you wanna save the bullets for the big mushroom guys and the final mushroom boss at the end of the game. So try not to hit L2 at all unless you are absolutely desperate to kill an enemy so we're done here for now and we're going to backtrack my favorite word right now 
all the way back to uh, that first tree that we saw um, where we picked up the second stone mask. So make your way out of this area past where the vines were. And then when you get to the main path, go right. So opposite of the courtyard. And then just follow this all the way down until you reach the bridge at the end. So here's the bridge and then there's the tree. So interact with the tree to cut it down. And then go ahead and make your way across. And we can't go to the right just yet. Um, there's these fire flowers that we can't pass until we actually make it rain. And we can't do that yet. So for now, just go over to the left. You can break this crate if you want, there's nothing there. But open up the chest and pick up the journal page inside. And this is letting you know about that tree with the eyes that we passed earlier and that there's a leprechaun inside that will actually sell us things. So we can interact with that tree now, but for, for just now, let's go inside the cave first. And then once you're inside, the path is going to split left and right. Go ahead and go left first, and there's going to be an enemy here, so make sure you kill him before you do anything. And that's what happens when these guys hit you. Just so you know, your screen does sort of get disoriented. And if you need to use a healing potion, go ahead and hit triangle to do so. But once he's down, open up the chest and pick up the two rubies. And there's also a cave mushroom here, so pick that up. And we're going to use the cave mushrooms to make explosive potions a little later on, so we will be needing that. But follow the path along, and when it splits here, take the path going left again, and that's just to the exit, so you want to go left. And then kill these two enemies here. And then once they're down, go ahead and open up the chest, pick up the rubies. And you're also going to pick up a shovel. And the shovel is what we need to get into that second dungeon because we're going to be digging up those green statuette pieces. So we have everything we need from here. So go ahead and exit out of the cave. And before we go back to the second temple, we're going to go to that leprechaun tree and just buy everything that he has to offer. So once we load back in, cross back across the tree bridge, and then take a left. Okay, so again, you're going to go, sorry, go back across the tree bridge here and then take a left and then just head towards the tree with the glowing mushrooms on it. And then from there, go left to the tree with the glowing eyes and just interact with it and pay the ruby that you need to actually get the leprechaun to come forward and interact with him again. And if you've been following this guide, you should have enough rubies to buy everything he has to sell. So go ahead and buy all three items. And this old map is a treasure map that we can't get to just yet, of course, because we're still early in the game. But once we get there, I'll let you know that we need to dig up some treasure. So we're done here. We can't buy anything from him anymore. So go back to the main trail and then follow it back to where we cleared those vines earlier. And now we're going to go ahead and open up the second temple. So make your way back. And again, I know it's a dungeon. I'm sorry, I'm going to keep saying temple. <laughs> but just make your way across the path. All right, so we need four green statuettes. The first one is going to be up in the ruins up here. So make your way inside. And it's just going to be on the bench right here. And then just to the right of it is going to be a note just letting you know about the statuettes. It's not super important. And there's also going to be a crafting table just to the right of this. And we don't need this yet because we can't actually make anything. So just ignore that for now. But while we're here, I'm just going to show you that there is a crack in the wall that we will be 
using the exploding potion on a little bit later on to get through this and that's where the rope is that we need for the well to get into that dungeon so once you have the green statuette off the little bench there exit out of the ruins but don't go down yet instead you're gonna hug at the side going to the left pick up the blue flower and then these dark spiky looking plants is what you're actually going to be digging up So once you do, you'll see that a green statuette has appeared. So go ahead and pick that up and now make your way out of the ruins. And then just next to the tree with the glowing mushrooms on it is another little spiky bush that you can dig up. And that's gonna have the second green statuette. And then if you go up towards where that, I don't even know what you would call it, <laughs> the puzzle up here that we can't do yet. Uh, where you got the Fort Terrace key, basically. And there's going to be another bush, so go ahead and interact with that. And that's going to give you the last of the green statuettes. Alright, so make your way back down to the dungeon entrance. And just as we did before, you're going to interact with all four pedestals to place the statuettes down. And that's going to open up this portal here allowing us to go inside so go ahead and do so and then go through the doors and now we can complete kind of complete dungeon two but you'll see what i mean <laughs> when i say kind of because we will be going out before we actually finish this so go ahead and go forward a little bit and then go up the stairs on the right and then just jump down into this little area and as you can see this gate is closed there's a lever just behind you so pull that to open it up and then make your way down. And then uh, this little pink smoke area is actually poison and it will kind of take your breath away for lack of a better term, but it's short. It's just kind of an introduction to said poison. So keep that in mind for later on in the game. But before we go forward, we are gonna hit this lever just so that we have easy access to the entrance over here. And then make your way down the hallway. And we have a little rolling spiking log here that you can just jump over it with a circle. And if you need a dash, hit square to get out of the way of it once you are over it. And then up the stairs is nothing except for the little poison area that you just went through. So head right. And now we are in a room with a lot of acid just kicking it there. And we do need to drain this acid. So there's a device over here, but we're missing a valve for it. And the valve is going to be over here on the left hand side on this shelf. So go ahead and pick that up and then make your way back to the device and put the valve on it. And that's going to drain the room for you. And then once it's clean, go ahead and make your way across and up the stairs. And then just keep following this path along. And there is going to be a door over here on the left hand side. Go ahead and go inside the room. And we're just going to kill this enemy really quick. And there is a chest in here with a health potion and a ruby, so go ahead and pick those up. And now make your way out of the room and then to the left, and you're going to come to another room that is full of acid that we need to drain twice before we can get through. But there are two enemies here, so go ahead and kill them before we go forward. And there's the device that we need to put the first valve on, which is going to be in this room over here. And again, once you come down, go ahead and put the enemy inside. And then just go down this little hallway. And there's going to be a rolling log just above you, so you kind of want to be quick with this one. Go ahead and use dash to get past it. And then break the two vases on the side, and then the valve is going to be on the shelf. So grab that. And then dodge the log again. And then make your way back to the room that has all of the green acid. And then use the valve on the device to drain the first half of it. We'll need another valve to do the second one. So there's the second device, and the second valve is going to be up and over into this room. We got a little autosave here, and we can jump from platform to platform here. Um, oops, 
or you can just fall in. Um, that lever across the way does open up the gate on the left-hand side, but first we're gonna go over to the right and we're gonna make it all the way to the right. And on the wall is gonna be this little button that has these three scratch marks on it. And that's gonna open up the wall behind us where we're gonna pick up our third stone mask. And the rest of the temples each have, or dungeons, excuse me, each have one mask in them and then a couple outside of the dungeons. All right, so once you have that, go ahead and make your way back and then you're gonna go to the center and then go ahead and hit that lever that was across the way. And as you can see, that gate over there opened. So make your way through the new opening. And just as we open up the wall with that button with the three scratches, we're gonna do the same here a couple of times. So hit the button, go ahead and break these to get them out of the way. And on the right hand side is gonna be another button. And that's gonna open up the way just behind you. And then one more button on the wall. And these are the big mushroom guys that I was telling you about before. Again, L2 will shoot your button. Shoot your button will shoot your gun. And then once they go down, they will shoot themselves. So you can't hit them when they're like that. But each of these will take three bullets total. Unless you miss, then obviously they will take more. But once you're in the room, there's two chests. Some with bullets and health potions. The other one I think just has rubies. Yeah. And then of course the valve is on the shelf. So grab that and then make your way all the way back to the room with the acid. And then we're gonna use the valve on the device to drain the rest of the room so that we can continue forward. And again, if you need to use a health potion, use triangle. It's not absolutely necessary. There's not that many enemies left in this little dungeon here. So once the room is drained, to continue is the stairs on the right, but there is a chest over here on the left, so go ahead and open that and get the two rubies, and then make your way up the stairs. And there is gonna be a door over here on the left, and that's actually the way to go forward. We can't do anything past that, so make your way inside and kill the enemy. All right. And then as you can see, the activation crystal is behind this gate here and there is a lever, but it is covered in rust. So we do need an anti-rust anti potion in order to open this. So there is a side entrance to the dungeon that is just through this little cave here. And we're gonna go through and actually collect a whole lot of stuff while we're out here and do a little preparation for some other dungeons. Um, it'll just save you time in the future and yeah, it's just easier to get everything now. So once you're out, um, there are two enemies that are gonna be outside that we're gonna kill, but first we're gonna grab our witch mushroom that we need for the anti-rust potion. We're gonna chop down a tree, pick up some flowers, another stone mask, all sorts of stuff. So once this loads in, we can go ahead and get started. All right, and directly in front of you, just to the left, is gonna be that witch mushroom, and that's just what you need to make the anti-rust potion. But we're gonna grab some other stuff while we're here. So first, go ahead and kill these two enemies just to get them out of the way. I feel like the second one was a lot further away than he just was. Let's run it up here. Okay, so once they're down, over on the right hand side is going to be a blue flower, some brushwood, and there's also going to be a wood mushroom on this tree. And while we're here, we're going to interact with this tree to chop it down. And this is the very first tree that we saw just across the way from where that portal is going to be just across there. Um, so that'll take us back to the entrance and the first house, but before we do that, Go ahead and turn around so that you are facing the ruins just behind you. And over on the right hand side is going to be this little trail leading up. Pick up the brushwood and then pick up the little journal page at the very top. And this is going to be another treasure map showing you uh, the location of the second treasure that we're going to pick up in the game. So we can't get there just yet, of course, so I'll let you know when we do. But for now, just make your way back up the hill pick up the blue mushroom, ignore the gate just for now, 
Um, I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing for that here in a second. And then if you turn left, the path does split, and to the right are some more fire flowers that we can't get past just yet, so just keep following the path on the left and then interact with the tree at the end. And there's no leprechaun in this one, but there are two rubies, which will come in handy a little later on. So go ahead and pick those up. And then make your way up this little hill just to the left of the tree and pick up the wildflower. And before you jump down into the ruins, just go ahead and look over to the left and you can see that there's a little spot that you can interact with just across the way. And this is gonna be the fourth stone mask that we need to pick up so carefully make your way across the top of the ruins and then interact with the mask to pick it up and you can fall in if you want to it's okay but break these crates and inside the ruins themselves is going to be a chest and then inside is going to be the recipe for the exploding potion which we are going to be needing a few of them for in order to complete the game so make your way out of the ruins via that little ramp thing column <laughs> and then turn around and then go back up the hill that we just went up and then when you get to the gate I'm just going to show you what we're going to be doing here if you turn around there is another dungeon just behind you and as you can see just in front of the door is all this acid so we do need to drain this before we can actually get into that temple so we're going to go ahead and do that now and just get it done and out of the way so make your way into the gate and as you can see, there's another house in here, but before we go inside, go ahead and go over to the right and pick up the wildflower and then make your way through the little gap in the wall here. And then just to the left is some brushwood and some berries. So go ahead and grab those and then make your way back into the area with the house. And if you just look at this tree, this might look familiar to you. This is actually where the first treasure map leads us to so you can see the tree the little cabbage the house right next to it so go ahead and go by the tree and you're going to see a little area on the ground that you can dig up so go ahead and do so and you will get the treasure hunter trophy when you do this and you're going to get an improved pistol so to equip the pistol hit up on the d-pad to open up your inventory and then just go down and select it and just make sure that you do in fact have the improved pistol equipped so once you have that, go ahead and go inside the house. And then make your way over to the room on the left and break all these crates. And then just on the wall is going to be the bedroom key. Go ahead and pick that up. And then the door just across from the entrance to the house is going to be the bedroom that you can now open. Go inside, pick up the journal page on the left, and this is just the solution to the puzzle to get the steel sword that we're about to pick up. And you just wanna keep a note on when the light shines on two birds looking at each other, because that is the solution to the puzzle. So with that in mind, go ahead and put that away. And then at the crafting table, we're gonna make an anti-rust potion as well as an explosive potion. So make sure you make both of those while you're here and then exit out of that room and then head down the hallway to this room with the fireplace and this is where we're going to complete that puzzle to get the sword so you should have at least six pieces of brushwood on you especially if you've been following along here so interact with the fireplace to uh, start the fire and then on the right side of the room you're going to see these two owl statues make sure they are facing each other and then the bookshelves across the way are going to open up. So there they are. There's the bookshelf. There's a trophy. And go ahead and pick up the steel sword. And just as before, hit up on the D-pad to open up your inventory. And just go ahead and equip that steel sword so that we have a little bit, a little bit more power to our, our hits here. So pick up the journal page just across the way as you will be needing this for a puzzle later on. And we're done with this house, so go ahead and exit out.
again, once you load back in, we're gonna go back through the gap in the wall over here and just head all the way down to where this like little wooden scaffolding is. And just to the right of this is gonna be some more brushwood, so go ahead and pick that up. And then to the left is gonna be a cave. So go inside the cave, and we're gonna pick up another cave mushroom as well as all sorts of goodies while we're in here. So once it loads in, make your way down. And there's a ruby vein here that we can't grab just yet, but we are about to pick up a pickaxe for it. So when the path splits, go left. And as you can see, there is a wall that is kind of glowing green with a little interaction symbol on it. This is where you're gonna place your explosive potions. So once you do, back up a little bit so it explodes. And that dungeon that had all the acid in front of it is now going to be drained. So we can get to that door now, but we're not going to do it just yet because we still have to finish up the second dungeon. So once you have that, exit out of the little now acid filled room and then head down and look out for the enemies here. And then once he's down, the path does split left and right. It's going to come up here. So go to the left first and pick up this cave mushroom. And then go down into the room with the two enemies. And as you can see, we do have a little bit more power to us and a little low on health. Potion. And there's the second guy. So go into this room with this emerald vein and we're gonna pick up the pickaxe, open up the chest, and there's gonna be a ruby and some more bullets. And then interact with the vein and we can get an emerald out of this and then we're gonna go and interact with that ruby vein and get the ruby out of that one so make your way back towards the entrance and then just to the left here is gonna be the vein and now we have everything we need out of this cave so go ahead and exit All right, and we have everything we need from this area, so we can go ahead and make our way back to the second temple that we exited out of earlier. So from here, just jump down and then just kind of dash through this little poison area there. It won't kill you, it's not that big. So once you're back in the area where we cut down the tree, we're gonna go into the cave over here and finish up with dungeon number two and activate that second crystal. All right, so make your way through the cave. And we're gonna use that anti-rust potion on the lever just to the left of this gate here. And interact with it again to actually open said gate. And then make your way to the activation crystal and interact with it to activate it. And then interact with it a second time to teleport back to the entrance. All right, so once you load in, go ahead and go to the ruins just across the way here where we picked up that first green statuette. And we're gonna use the crafting table to make another explosive potion. We picked up that cave mushroom just earlier so we can make a second one. And then you're gonna use that on the wall that we saw earlier to grab the little rope. 
And then inside is going to be a chest. Go ahead and open that up and pick up said rope. And we're going to crank out temple number three. I said temple again. Dungeon number three before we go back to the house. So from the second dungeon to the left where that well was, go ahead and interact with that. And you're going to put that rope on there. And then interact with the rope a second time to actually go down into the dungeon. All right, so go through this little cave area. And then you're gonna take a left. And here, kind of similar to those lantern puzzles, instead of lanterns, we have to break diamonds. So as you can see, this gate has two little circles next to it. So we need to break two, uh, we'll call them crystals instead of diamonds. So two crystals and that'll open up the gate here. So go ahead and go on inside. And we're actually gonna kill this enemy before we do anything so it doesn't kill us first. And then open up the chest that was just behind it and grab that ruby and the bullets. And then there's two more enemies in here that we're just gonna get out of the way for that very reason. <laughs> One day I won't get hit by them. All right. Well, that was beautiful. So here <laughs> we have a few crystals that we're gonna need to break. So for this one, we need two. For this gate, we need three. For this gate, we need seven. For this one, we need five. And for this one, we need three. So we're going to start with the one that needs two, just across the way. And as you can see, there are two crystals here in the center of the room. So go ahead and break two, both of those. And that gate is now open. So go inside. And we're going to go ahead and kill these two enemies down here. Again, you can just hold down R2 so that you're just constantly swinging to make it a little easier on yourself. And then on the far side of the room, oh, I'm going the wrong way. On the far side of the room is gonna be the third crystal that you're gonna break. And that's gonna open up one of the gates and make your way back, but stop right before you have to go out. And you're gonna see that there's another stone mask behind this gate here. And if you step on this button, that far gate behind it opens up. So we are gonna need to place something on here in order to get that. We'll be doing that here in just a second, but for now, go ahead and exit out of the uh, room that required two and take a left. And this gate that requires three is now gonna be open. And then turn right. In here we have a room that has six buttons, but we only need two in order to open up this little gate here. Okay, and just behind where that gate is, there's gonna be these two little dice things on these pedestals. So you just need to put them on two of the buttons. So the first one is gonna be just where the gate is, the first one on the left. And then the second one is gonna go where the entrance was, just to the left of that one. So a little kitty corner from each other. And then that gate's gonna open. So go ahead and break the crystal once it does. And then we don't need these buttons anymore, so go ahead and grab any of the dice, doesn't matter which one. And now we're going to go ahead and grab that mask across the way. So make your way back to the room with the two. Okay, and you're going to place the button down, or place the dice down on the button. And now that that gate is open, go ahead and make your way back. And then pick up the stone mask. So now we're gonna make our way to the other door that required the three crystals, which is just across the room over here. So make your way inside. And there's gonna be a little auto save, so your game is gonna freeze a little bit here. And there's gonna be two rolling logs that we need to jump over. So do the first one. And again, dash if you need to, to avoid getting hit when it comes back. And just in this little corner is gonna be another chest with a ruby and a health potion. So go ahead and pick those up. And then make your way across the second rolling log and then break the crystal. And then make your way back out.
and then head over to the right. And the room that required five is open, so go inside. And then go ahead and kill these enemies before you do anything. All right, and just how we got that storage key at the beginning of the game, we're going to do the same thing here to break the two crystals because they are above us. So grab one of the dice and then just toss them upwards to break the crystal. And there's going to be one on the other side as well, so make sure you grab both of them. And that'll finish up this room, so make your way out. And that final gate will now be open, so head over to the right and then inside. And there's the activation crystal, so go ahead and interact with it to turn it on, and then a second time to teleport back to the entrance. Alright, so once you load back in, we're going to head back to uh, that first house that we entered when we first started the game, and we're going to go on to the Fort Terrace now that we have that key and pick up a potion, some bullets, and some rubies. So go back to the courtyard and then go inside the house. And then make your way upstairs and then down the hallway into the room on the left and interact with the door at the end. And then once that loads in, open up both chests. One is going to have a recipe for the health potion, and the other one is going to have the bullets and the rubies. So make sure you open up both and pick up all three items. You don't actually have to go back through the house to get out of here. You can just jump down here and make it a whole lot easier and a lot less loading screens. So once you're down, go through the gate that is to the left of the entrance to the house. And go ahead and pick up this dice that we brought from the very beginning of the game. And we're going to cross over the tree bridge that we created earlier. And then just to the right is this little area with a bunch of shields. Go ahead and just toss the dice in there so that it's there for later because that is where it will be going. And then just dash through this little poison area. And then just to the right is that dungeon that we drained all the acid in front of. So interact with the door and we're going to go ahead and complete this one. Alright, so once you load in, just go forward and then turn right. And here we're going to have to be pulling a lot of levers and lots of dice and lots of buttons. So for this one, it's going to be a lever just across the way and that's going to lift up this little platform here. And then make your way through the little hallway and then open the door and there are going to be a couple of enemies in here that we need to kill. So once they're down, go ahead and go up the stairs, pull the lever, and now we can jump across to that platform that we just raised up. So do so to get to the other side. And then just to the right is going to be a door here. Go inside the door first, 
and then quickly get past the little pink projectiles and there's going to be a chest pick up the health potion and the ruby inside and then make your way back out while dodging those same projectiles and then turn right and go down the hallway there's nothing to the right over here so go left And then pull the lever. And then you're going to go down the stairs and kill all three enemies down here. Okay, so in this room we have three little platforms that we need to raise to get to the other side. But before we do that, we are going to prep the uh, gate that is, I guess, hiding <laughs> the mask that we need to pick up. So on the far end side of the room, on the right hand side, is going to be this dice. So go ahead and pick that up and then make your way across to the other side. And then in this little hallway is this fourth platform here with a button just across the way. So toss the dice so that it hits the button. And then just down the hallway is going to be this lever, and that's going to open up the gate on the other side of this mask here, allowing us to grab it here in just a minute. So jump down, pick up your dice, watch out for the enemy here. Open up the chest. And there's also going to be a lever on this far right little hallway here, so interact with that to lift up that first platform grab your dice and then just across the room is going to be another button here so place the dice on that to lift up the central little platform and of course this lever here to do uh, the last one so once all three are up go back up the stairs and then make your way across And then just to the left is going to be that mask, so go ahead and pick that up. And just keep following the path along, and you are going to have to jump across these little platforms so you don't touch the acid. And then make your way down the stairs. And here, if you pull this lever, you'll notice that those platforms in front of you uh, raise up but we can't get past it just yet so there is a gate blocking us that we need to raise up first so go ahead and hit that lever again to uh, re-lower the platforms and then go past them follow it all the way along to the right pull that lever open up that gate and then make your way back down pull that lever at the bottom and now we can get past where that gate was and make our way across those platforms so go ahead and do so, and then jump down into the room just below. There he is. I like, I know there's an enemy around here. <laughs> go ahead and kill him, and there's going to be one just on the other side. And again, if you need to use a health potion, go ahead and hit triangle to do so. And as you can see, we have a few buttons here. There's one down that way, one right here, and we have two platforms we need to raise and another button just across the way. So on this far right little hallway, make your way down and pick up the first dice. And then on the opposite side of the room of where the platforms are is this third platform over here. Go ahead and stand on it and then toss the dice to the button just to the right so that you go up. And there's going to be a second dice up here, so go ahead and grab that. And then one of the dice is going to go on this button just to the right of where that other one was. And that's going to raise the second little platform here, and then stand on the first one, and then toss the dice on the plot or the button just by that one and then make your way across and now you are at the activation crystal so go ahead and interact with it once to turn it on and then a second time to go back to the entrance of the dungeon.
Okay, so once you exit out of the uh, little dungeon here, we have two more to go. There's six total, and we just did our fourth one. So go ahead and go through this little pink poison area. Again, it's not gonna kill you, it's pretty short, but we are gonna get a, a recipe for a potion that's gonna help us with that here in just a second. So make your way back into the area that had the four shields on it, and there's gonna be, uh, well, yeah, four statues, I should say, but there's four shields in total in this area. So there's gonna be a griffin, so go ahead and pick that up and just put it on the ground, an eagle, a unicorn, and in this back corner, if you break these crates, there's going to be a fourth one that's a bear. Go ahead and pick that up and then just place it on the ground for now. And at the bottom of these four statues are going to be some plaques that read the house names that they associate with. So this one is Rubio. And if you open up your journal, you can go to the page that we picked up in the house earlier and just look for Rubio and he has the eagle shield. So pick up the eagle and then place it on his statue. And then Garrido. And he's gonna have the bear. And then Ortega. He's gonna have the griffin. And of course, process of elimination will tell you that the last one is gonna be the unicorn. So once you place that down, you'll notice that that door opens up just to the left. Be sure to pick up your dice and just take it with you and go a little ways down and then just place it on the path. Be sure to pick up the blue flower on the right hand side. And before we do anything, we're just gonna kill these two enemies in this area really quick, starting with this big mushroom guy. Make sure you dodge the projectiles that this guy's spitting at you in the meantime. Alright. And then once those two are done, go ahead and pick up your dice. And we're just going to bring it a little ways down so that we can pick it up a little later. And then just in front of you is going to be a gate with a graveyard gate just to the right of it. We can't open up the graveyard just yet, so we're going to go inside the house first. But just to the left is going to be this wood mushroom that you can pick up, so make sure you do so. And then go through the gate, open up the chest, pick up the sapphire and the bullets. And then over on the far right side is going to be another witch mushroom. And you can break this crate if you want, there's nothing in it, so it doesn't really matter. But go inside the house once you're done. All right, and go ahead and break the little planks on the wall over here to get inside the room on the left-hand side. Open up the chest, pick up the recipe for the breath potion, and this is gonna um, enabled us to go through the poison much longer before we actually start taking damage on it. So at the crafting table, go ahead and make as many breath potions as you can. You should be able to make at least two with everything we picked up. Make a anti-rust potion, and we can't make the explosive potion just yet, but we will be needing that later. And make sure you also create at least one health potion. Um, whether or not you need it, you do need it for a trophy, and there's the alchemist trophy, and that's for creating one of each type of potion. That trophy is missable, so make sure you make at least one, and then exit out of this room, and there's going to be a door over here that if you interact with it, it tells you you can't open it. But just to the left on this bookshelf is this book that has a lot of glowing text on it. Interact with that to open it up. And then down in the basement is a puzzle that has a lot of emeralds, rubies, and sapphires. So open up the chest, pick up the little journal entry here, and it's going to tell you about the magic beans and how they require rain, and that's going to lead us to the fifth dungeon that we're going to do here in a second. So we can't complete this puzzle just yet, so just ignore it, head back upstairs, and then exit out of the house. All 
right, so once you load in, go ahead and exit out of the gate and be sure to pick up the dice that's on the trail here, but don't follow the trail back to the exit. Instead, turn right and there's gonna be a little pathway between these boulders here. And at the end are gonna be some ghost vine looking things that we can't break just yet. We do need a magic sword before we can actually get through that. And we're gonna be picking that up here shortly. So for now, just ignore that and head over to the right drop your little dice before you reach this poison area because there is an enemy here that we need to kill before we actually go through here and if you haven't already done so be sure to drink both of those breath potions that you made while inside the house that way you can get through this next part without taking any damage so pick up your dice and then again this is all poison so you want to hold down square so that you dash whenever it's available and then just make your way all the way to the end and again because you had those two potions you should be fine to not do any damage and then at the very end is going to be another big mushroom guy go ahead and shoot him the three times required to kill him and then ignore the ruins just in front of you for now and follow the trail to the left and kill this enemy over here. And then just past him is going to be another stone that you can interact with to increase your maximum health. And if you need to, go ahead and use a health potion. I know I got hit a couple of times there, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. And then just to the right of the stone is this ruin area, and it's the same one from a like just a minute ago, just a different side of it. So pull this lever and it's gonna open up to where this little statue of a lady covering her eyes is. And then pull this other lever to open up the side door and go ahead and grab the dice that we've been lugging around this entire game. So here we have a little puzzle that we need to complete. She's covering her eyes, so we need to match basically what she's doing this dice is already in the correct position and then we have a third dice right here so the one that you're holding you're going to put it on the far left eye and you're going to leave that center one blank so take this third one and then just behind her is going to be another little cubby hole so throw try that again throw the dice in there there we go and then if you stand right in front of her you'll hit a sensor that will open up the door just to the right. So go ahead and go through the door and go inside the cave at the end. And then make your way inside the cave. And there's gonna be a couple of enemies we need to kill here. So when the path splits, go ahead and take the path going left first. There's another little spitter enemy. And then pick up the cave mushroom that is just by him, and then follow the path on the left hand side. And as you can see, there is a rock here that if we interact with, it says it can be moved. Turn around, and there's going to be a green stone on the wall just behind you. Interact with the little button, and it's going to open up the boulder. And then make your way inside. And here we have a sapphire little vein that we are gonna get a sapphire from. And then just to the right of that is this drawing on the wall. So interact with the drawing to copy it into your journal. And this is what we're gonna to use to actually make it rain. And it's that puzzle where we got the Fort Terrace key that we've passed a couple of times now. We can now complete it with that solution. So make your way out of this little area and then when you get to the first big open room, take the left path. There's going to be another enemy here for you to kill. And then just go up the hill, and there's going to be a little ruby vein. Go ahead and grab the ruby from it. And now we're done with this cave, so we can exit out and continue on.
Okay, we don't need to pick up anything else from here. Uh, we are going to grab another stone mask really quick though. So exit out of those ruins and then just go to the left to find some more. Go ahead and kill the enemies here. And then dodge his projectiles. Okay, and in the room on the left are going to be two uh, chests to open up. One is just going to tell you about the stone mask that we've been picking up this entire time, and then two rubies in the other one. So go ahead and exit out of there, and then break these two crates, and just behind the crates is going to be another stone mask. And then if you look towards the entrance, this is actually going to be where the second treasure map leads us. So open up your journal and just look at old map 2. And as you can see, there is a mask on the wall with a leaning column and a little arrow pointing where to dig. So there's the mask, the leaning column, and then of course the little symbol where to dig. So dig up the chest. We got some goodies inside, so go ahead and pick those all up. All right, so once we have all that, we're gonna go ahead and exit out of this area and we're gonna go back through this poison. So again, use dash to make this go a little quicker. And we're gonna go all the way back to those ruins with that puzzle that we were not able to complete before, but now can. But we are going to also create a potion just before we do. So keep following this path along, make your way through the little area with the four shields that we put on the statues and then turn left and you're going to go up and over this little wood bridge and then go through the gate and then head on inside the house and we're going to create an explosive explosive potion before we continue forward And again, the crafting table is going to be all the way on the right hand side. And if you're short on health potions, go ahead and make more. Um, you don't need anything else after this point. So whatever potions you can create, go ahead and do so. Otherwise, just continue on with the story. And once you're ready, go ahead and exit the house. And then we're going to go through the gate on the right hand side. All right, so go ahead and go through the gate and then turn right to where we cleared those vines at the very beginning of the game and keep following the path all the way up to the hill and then to this little ruins area. So here we have four little pedestals with four stones on it, four symbols and a button in the middle. So. We need to turn these stones so that they match the symbols shown on their little pedestals. And we just drew that so we have the solution. So the circle is going to be the wave, the square is going to be the upside down triangle, the triangle is going to be the eye, and the diamond is going to be the mushroom. So starting with the circle, I already forgot what it was, <laughs> the circle is the wave. All right, and then the diamond is the mushroom. The square is the upside down triangle and the triangle is the eye so that one is fine and then go ahead and hit the button in the middle once you're done and it's going to start raining and you're going to unlock the meteorologist trophy and now we can get past the uh, little paths that had the fire flowers on it but we're not going to go to those just yet because they're not super necessary for what we're about to do but we are going to use the magic beans we bought from the leprechaun earlier so make your way all the way back to the first house from the beginning of the game go ahead and use dash to make this go a little quicker and into the courtyard and then go past the house and through the gate on the other side 
And then right into the ruins, and again, this is where that final portal is going to be, but it's obviously not there just yet. And there's a dirt pile at the end that you can interact with. And you're going to plant the magic beans that we bought off the leprechaun earlier. And because it's raining, a beanstalk is going to grow. So once it does, interact with the beanstalk. And we can get up to that area up on the top. And then go from there. And as you can see, uh, we have some more vines that we need to break with the magic sword, which we do not have just yet. But over on the left hand side, there's a blue flower. Go ahead and pick that up. And then over on the right hand side, there is going to be an enemy that we're going to kill really quick. So go ahead and do so. There we go. And then interact with the tree. And then offer the leprechaun a ruby, and now he's going to talk to you. And if you've been following this guide, you should have enough rubies to buy everything that he has to offer, including the magic sword. So buy the sword, the health potion, the bullets, and the yellow statuette. And because you bought everything both leprechauns had to offer, you will get the traitor trophy. And then just to the left is a little portal that requires two yellow statuettes to open. And as you know, we just picked one up from the leprechaun. The other one is what we need that explosive potion for. So make your way back and then grab the wildflower while we're here. And then open up your inventory with up on the D-pad and equip that magic sword. And now we can break the little ghost vines that are blocking the way here. And we need to raise some platforms so that we can get across the way, but we're missing a gear here. So over on the left hand side is going to be this journal entry and it's going to tell us where to find that gear. So from here, we're going to backtrack just a little bit. Go ahead and follow the trail and make your way back down the little beanstalk. And then just go straight forward to where that broken bridge is directly in front of us. <clears throat> and then jump down. And then on the far right side, you're going to get a little notification of somewhere where you can dig. So go ahead and dig up the chest. And inside the chest is going to be the gear. So make your way back up the stairs and uh, there's a few things we can do now or later and I'm actually just going to wait and do them later. Um, as you know, I said we can go through the fire flowers now and now that we have a magic sword, we can clear those vines that we passed earlier as well, but it's best to just continue on with this dungeon first. So make your way back up the beanstalk. And then make your way back over to uh, just in front of this dungeon. Place your little gear down on the little hole. Pull the lever. And now we have some platforms that we can jump across. Carefully do so. If you do fall into the acid, uh, there's some stairs just on the left hand side and right hand side that you can go up. And there's nothing over here on the left, but there is going to be something over here on the right. So this big cracked wall, we can place the explosive potion down and break it. So go ahead and do so. And inside is going to be the yellow statuette as well as a chest. So pick up the ruby and the bullets inside. And before we go into the temple, we're going to make our way back across these platforms. And because we got that second yellow statuette, we can go inside that area. So head over to the left, place the statuette on the pedestal, and then interact with the stone inside to increase your maximum health. And now we can go inside a dungeon number five and get that one done. So make your way back across the little platforms and inside the dungeon. Okay, so once we've loaded in, as you can see, it looks just the same as all the other ones, but this one has a lot of poisonous gas in it. So again, we already had all the potions that we could, so we should be fine. So just make your way through and every now and then uh, just stop and go up some stairs and 
these rooms won't really have anything. They're more of just like breather breaks in case you didn't take any breathing potions. So if you didn't, use that for a breather. If you did, just continue on. And again, take a breather. There's nothing in this room for you, except gates and more poison. <laughs> there is a chest, um, bullets, if you want bullets. <laughs> Uh, you really don't need them at this point if you've been saving them. If you have been using your gun pretty often, then yeah, you probably want those. So make your way through some more poison, and then turn left, and then up the stairs. And again, just a little breather room. You can kill this enemy if you want. It's up to you. And again, there's nothing to pick up in here, so just go down and make your way to the right. And up the stairs. And of course, we got a little pause in our game from it saving, so go over to the right. And there's a room that's full of poisonous gas on the floor and platforms just above it. So stick on the right hand side of the platforms and jump over to the third one. And if you look over to the right, there's going to be a little hallway down at the bottom. Make your way through the hallway, up the stairs, and there's going to be another mask for you to pick up. And then make your way back through the little poison and again use dash if you need to and the way to get back up is on the exact opposite side of the room so go ahead and go up the stairs and there is a chest here if you want to open it up it's got some rubies in it which you don't really need at this point but you can pick them up if you want to and now we're done with everything so the exit is just on the other side of the room uh, kind of kitty corner so make your way across all these platforms And then onto, oh. yeah, so if you fell, that's okay. <laughs> I'll probably speed through this to make sure that I'm not wasting your time. And then make your way back across the platforms much more carefully this time. There we go. Okay, so continue on. And then you're going to come to this big open room with this lever here. And you're probably thinking, this is going to open up the gate, but it's not. Instead, it's going to open up a bunch of secret rooms that have some enemies in them. So just be careful when you do press that lever. Pull that lever, excuse me. And then kill all the enemies that are here. There we go. And on the right hand side is going to be another chest. Go ahead and open that up for a health potion and another ruby. And on the opposite side of the room is going to be a lever and this is the one that opens up the gate. So pull that lever and the gate is now open. So go inside the next room. Follow the stairs up to the left and we have another little auto save point here so the game's going to freeze a little bit. And then make your way across the platforms and into this next big room here. And we have two little spitting enemies. One is actually behind us right now, so make sure you are constantly moving to dodge both of them. And then into this big room. And go ahead and kill this big mushroom. All right. So now we have three gates that we need to open. This lever is going to open up the first one, but we have two more behind us. And there's going to be one to the left, or excuse me, one to the right, and one to the left. So we're going to get the one to the right first, and it's just going to be behind the gate directly in front of us. So to get there, turn right, left, 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 and again, dash if you need to so that you can get through that quickly. And now we have one more gate that we need to open, so that's going to be down the stairs to the left. And to get this one, you're going to go right, left, and directly in front of you, and then just quickly make your way back. 
and that'll finish up this dungeon and there's the activation crystal so interact with it to turn it on and then interact with it a second time to teleport back to the entrance All right, so we have one more crystal in one more dungeon to complete here. So once you load in, go ahead and jump back across these platforms and then make your way back down the beanstalk. And we're gonna do a little bit of cleanup before we go to the actual temple. Um, we're gonna max out our health and also pick up another mask super quick. So uh, from here, just go straight to where the broken bridge is and then go across the little wooden uh, tree bridge that we created earlier. And then just to the left of where the poisonous gas is, is the ruins where we uh, picked up the explosive potion as well as that mask up top. So go ahead and go up this hill. And then when you reach the top, take a left. And as before, we can cross these fire flowers now. So go ahead and do so. And on the other side is gonna be another stone where we can increase our maximum health. And that's gonna be the last one that we interact with. And now we are at full health, which gets us the ready for battle trophy. So once you have that, go ahead and make your way back down. I'm just gonna dash a little bit to get through here. And then make your way through the area that had the four shields. And then when the path splits, take the path going left. And now we're gonna go ahead and cut these vines because we have a magic sword now and pick up the stone mask on the other hand side as well as the berries if you want to. Uh, those aren't really necessary at this point. Um, it's up to you if you wanna grab them. But make your way back to where these three statues are and then we're gonna head into the house and finish that puzzle that's down in the basement. All right, so make your way downstairs. And now we have everything we need for this puzzle. Now, this is the solution and I would love to explain how the solution actually works, but I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that, that I know. This was a whole lot of trial and error on my part to try to get this to open up the door. Um, I'm still really confused by this and I love puzzles. So I really hope that says something about how confusing this is. So basically we're gonna place some rubies, some sapphires and some emeralds on these four statues here. And it's gonna open up a pathway that leads to the graveyard. So for the red statue over here, we're going to place two rubies down. For the green statue, we're going to place two emeralds. For the purple statue, we're going to place a ruby and a sapphire. And then for the blue statue, we're going to place an emerald, which is already there, and then a sapphire. And that's going to open up the entrance just to the left over here. And again, I have no idea how this comes from this but it works so we're just gonna go with it so make your way through the cave and again this is gonna take us to the graveyard which is gonna take us to the final little dungeon so make your way across the rocks here and then look out for the enemy and there's actually gonna be two enemies in this little cave so just be careful as you're passing by and then make your way out
Okay, so again, we are in the graveyard now, and we're going to go ahead and open up the gate over here so that we have an easy access. Over on the right-hand side is this crypt, so go inside and pick up the key to the graveyard, and then just interact with the gate to open that up. And if you remember, we did make an anti-rust potion earlier that we're going to use for this crypt up here on the hill. Um, go ahead and pick up the blue flower if you want. It's not super necessary, but interact with the gate to remove the rust and that's going to use that potion that we created and then open up the gates and inside is going to be a blue statuette so grab the statuette and go towards the portal and here we have two little pedestals which require one blue statuette each so we just picked one up so there's the first one and then just behind you on this little table here is going to be another journal entry and the main thing you want to look out for is the key lies under the eyes of the three stages or three sages excuse me so for the second blue pedestal that's what we need to look for so these statues are sages and there just so happen to be three so you want to find the point where they are all looking in the same spot so going forward from that one and then these two are just a little bit forward. So in the grass over here is gonna be a spot where you can dig. Go ahead and dig it up. And inside the chest is gonna be the second blue statuette. So grab that and make your way back to the graveyard. And then place the blue statuette on the second pedestal. And that's gonna open up the portal. And now we can finish the last dungeon of the game and then move on to the final area so interact with the doors to go inside and then make your way in interact with the lever to open up the little gate here and kill the enemies inside And then break the little ghost vines with your magic sword. And here you can see we have hit a wall. So there are invisible walls in this dungeon that you kind of just need to find the little entrance for. And then make your way up the stairs. And we're going to go left first and just grab this chest. We don't really need it, but just in case you did not buy everything from the leprechauns and you need rubies, that's where you can get rubies. And here we have another big open room that has a lot more invisible walls. So be careful with the enemies on this one, as they will attack you if they see you. There we go. Both of them on this one. Okay, and again, if you need to use a health potion, just hit triangle to do so. And then make your way out of this room. And we hit a little auto save point. And then before we jump across these platforms, we're gonna come down here and kill this spitting enemy just to get him out of the way. And then make your way back up the stairs. And then starting on this far platform, we can walk on the invisible wall that does appear. And if you look just behind here, there is a little hallway here. So make your way down and look out for the enemy. And there is a chest here. And again, you don't really need it unless you're low on health potions or rubies. Um, that's basically if you haven't been following this guide from the beginning that's where you can find a little bit extra extra goodies for you. So make your way back up and then across all the platforms and the invisible floors. And then down into the next room. And we're gonna go ahead and kill the two enemies here. All right. And as you can see, we have two uh, little dice here, and inside this room are going to be two invisible buttons, one on the left and one on the right. So there's the one on the right, 
And I believe the one on the left is this going to be this far one. Yeah. All right, so once you place the little dice down on the two buttons, this gate will open up for you. So head on inside. And there is a little area with three chests over here. So if you hit the button with the three scratch marks on it, it opens up the wall just behind you. So if you need anything, uh, bullets or health potions or even rubies, you can go in here and go ahead and grab them. So I'm just going to pick everything up so you guys see it. Oops. There we go. And then just make your way forward down the hall from there. And here we have two rolling logs that we need to dodge. And don't forget to use dash if you need to to get past them. And then up into the next room. And this is also where we're going to pick up the final stone mask that we need to get the... Uh, you won't get the trophy here, but we will need to turn the mask in so that you can get that trophy. So just about near the stairs on the left, you're going to see that this walkway does appear. Um, just follow it all the way straight until this little inlet on the left hand side appears and you're going to play a little bit of game of trust and just jump across and the new floor is going to appear once you do. Follow this all the way to the end and there's the last mask. So go ahead and grab that and then make your way back and then once the floor ends again just jump across and you'll land on the invisible platform or flooring whatever you want to call it and then just follow it along to the left to the right and then forward and this does end so you will need to make the jump across so go ahead and do so and then once you get into this big room there's going to be three levers here you only need one so this no this no these two will open up the wall and spawn enemies for you to kill so just interact with the one on the left hand side and that's going to bring you to the last activation crystal needed so go ahead and interact with it to turn it on and that's the all crystals trophy and then interact with it again to uh, teleport back to the entrance of the dungeon and now the final portal is open, but first we're going to turn in all 10 of the stone masks that we've picked up along the way and then pick up a golden mushroom that we're going to need for one of the uh, ending trophies um, for the actual game itself. So we have a little bit of backtracking to do in order to actually get there, but it shouldn't take too long. Okay, so once you load in, go ahead and exit out of this area. And we're just going to dash our way through because enemies have spawned here, but you don't have to fight them. You can just pass them right on by. So go through the area that had the four shields, turn left, go across the little log bridge that we created earlier, ignore the portal for now and just go right and through the gate. And again, just ignore all the enemies that are here and just keep dashing past everything. And you're going to follow this trail all the way down until we reach that broken bridge and the other little log bridge that we created. So once you get there, cross over. And then to the left was a cave, but to the right were those fire flowers that we excuse me, couldn't pass earlier. So go ahead and go through those. And you'll come to a little courtyard with 10 statues on it and just interact with each of them to put a mask on them. And that will unlock the full set trophy for you as well as give you the gilded mushroom. Um, I'm probably just going to keep calling this the golden mushroom because it's easier to remember, but that will let us get to one of the endings of the game. And there's two separate endings, but you don't have to do two separate walkthroughs for them, so don't worry about that. Alright, so now we're going to head all the way back to where that portal was, so make your way across the log. And then just keep following this path all the way along. And then through the first gate. Try to ignore the enemies as best as possible. 
through the second gate, and then on the right to the final portal. And this is a point of no return. Once you go through the portal, you cannot come back. So make sure you have everything you need, especially that gilded mushroom. If you're missing any mask, you do need to get them before you go through. And once you go through the portal, you will get the Brave New World trophy. And now we're gonna go through a few more portals before we get to a giant mushroom to defeat. And then finally the sage that we need to rescue. So go ahead and head forward a little bit and then a turn left and pick up this pink mushroom. And then just by this portal over here is a little pedestal. Go ahead and put the mushroom on that to activate the portal and go in it. And then you're gonna make your way down a couple of platforms here. If you wanna jump for safekeeping, by all means do so. Um, you don't have to. I know it probably makes you feel better if you do. And then before you jump, where these like arched vine things are, I don't know what to call them. Um, go ahead and turn right, and then the mushroom is going to be just around the corner here. And then make your way back, and then across the way, and look out for the enemy. And then just behind where the enemy was is a pedestal just across the way over there, and pick up the cube that is sitting on it. And then make your way back. And then just across the way is gonna be a button. Place the cube down on the button and that's gonna open up the little gateway here. So go through and you're gonna hit an autosave spot. So your game is gonna freeze just a little bit. Interact with the pedestal to place the pink mushroom down and go through the portal. Now here there are gonna be three enemies for you to kill. All right, and there's actually gonna be two portals, one to the left and one to the right. We just need the one that leads to the right for this. So go ahead and pick up the mushroom in the back and then when you turn around, it's gonna be the one that's to the left, but that's the portal that we just came from. So if you're facing the entrance to the right. So interact with the pedestal, go through the portal. And then we're going to go through some poison to get the next mushroom. So for this one, you're going to go right, left, left, and then the open area is where the mushroom is, and then just make your way back. And again, we have two portals here, one to the right and one to the left. We're going to use the one to the left. And then head on inside and now we have a gate that has one symbol on the left hand side and one symbol on the right and the one on the right is actually broken this broken piece goes with it so keep that in mind when we do this next part but we need two cubes to open up that door so the first one is going to be over here and there is a spitting enemy that you need to kill before you do so and then pick up the cube and then just bring it back to the door and place it on the ground. And even further on the right is gonna be the second one. So go ahead and kill this enemy over here. And if you need to take a health potion, go ahead and do so. I got a little low there. <laughs> so grab the cube and bring it back to the door. And first we're gonna do the little symbols that are on the left-hand side. So. The markings match the buttons on the ground, so you wanna hit the ones that are circled. So we're gonna place a button down on the center, and then a button down on the center right, and then we ourselves are gonna step on the bottom left, and that's gonna open up the first set of the gates. And then again, that second one on the right-hand side is part of this. So we're gonna place a button on the top two buttons, or a block on the top two buttons, excuse me. So top right, top left, and then we ourselves are going to step on the bottom center, and that's going to open up the next little part of the gate here. So go ahead and go on through. 
And then just to the right, there is a health potion if you want to pick it up. If not, it's completely up to you. I'm going to go ahead and skip it because I have 11 and I probably only need maybe one. All right, so now we come to our giant mushroom friend that we need to kill. So there's two waves. Well, two attacks, I should say. The first one, he spawns these two spitting enemies that you need to dodge and take down. And then when you do, his gate will close. Go ahead and shoot him twice, or his gate will open. And then he'll shoot three little laser logs, for lack of a better term, at you. So just jump over those when those come. And then he's going to spawn two more spitting enemies. So go ahead and take them down. And when his shield drops, go ahead and shoot him twice. And then again, jump over the three lasers. And again, he's gonna spawn two more enemies. And then when his shield drops, shoot him two more times. And now you just need to do it once. So jump over the three lasers. And then kill the two enemies that spawn. And then shoot him once. And that'll kill him and unlock the one final step trophy. And then just wait for the platform across the way to reach you and then jump across and go through the portal. All right, so now we're gonna get the first ending out of the two, and that's to save the sage that is stuck in this little ice block here. So go ahead and interact with him to actually save him. And that's gonna unlock the contract completed trophy. And just go through these little cutscene pages to get the final ending for this. And then it's gonna put you back at the main menu and once you're there, just hit continue and we'll quickly get the second ending associated with that golden mushroom that we picked up. So hit continue. And again, you needed to have picked up all 10 masks, placed them on the statues and picked up the gilded mushroom for this ending. But again, you can get both pretty quick without having to do two complete walkthroughs. So for this part, ignore your little friend stuck in the ice there and this golden pedestal, you're gonna put the mushroom down on it and then go through the portal and then just make your way down all these little platforms here and then through the next portal and I'm just gonna dash past all of these enemies we don't actually have to kill them um, just quickly move past them and make your way up all the stairs and then at the very top interact with the mask and this will give you ending number two and then of course the platinum trophy. So that'll just about do it guys. Um, thank you again for watching. Uh, hopefully it was easy enough to follow. Uh, pretty decent game, I, I kinda liked it. So um, don't forget to sub and like and all that good stuff and I will catch you guys next time.